Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. Quite a turn out, turn out today, isn't it? So, welcome to Amazon. Welcome to our ISO 45001 webinar. I'm Maria Dimitrova, lead auditor on quality, information security, and occupational health and safety management systems. My colleague Ken Neal has kindly joined. So, Ken, if you'd like to briefly introduce yourself, please do so. Yes, I'm Ken Neal. I'm one of the UK area managers for IMSM. I'll be on hand uh, throughout the presentation if anyone has any questions on, on any commercial aspects of implementation or migration on the standard. Thank you, Ken. Before we start, today's rules. Because we're quite a lot, a lot of people attending today, your mics and cameras have been disabled. But still, the chat is open for questions and comments. I'll be happy and can as well, as well will help me uh, to answer your questions at the end of the session, which we'll start, which we'll do with a Q&A session. And because we'll approach ISO 45001 as a strategic decision, we have three audit scenarios prepared for you. And I'll give you the right answers, as well as the reasons for those answers to be the correct ones at the end of my expose, just before we start with the Q&A. We also very welcome to book a free consultancy session with us. It is offered to all attendees to our webinars. So, hands on. Health and safety in the workplace are the number one concerns of most businesses. Yet, still vexed and injuries happen. According to international labor organizations, there are currently more than 2.78 million deaths a year as a result of occupational accidents or work-related diseases. Another frightening figure shows that there are nearly 400 million non-fatal injuries and illnesses. Fortunately, it is also considered that 99% of the work-related accidents and illnesses actually can be prevented. So, here we are, here we have ISO 45001. The standard sets the minimum standard of practice to protect not only employees, but also the rest of the organization's stakeholders. Well, the standard has been designed to provide a framework to increase safety, reduce workplace risks, and enhance health and well being at work. It aims at relieving the enormous impact that work related accidents have on families, on communities, and uh, to decrease significantly the cost to businesses and economies. Some facts about 40, 45,001. Let's get started with that. It is the first international standard on occupational health and safety. As weird as it sounds, it's a fact. It was published in 2018 with a three year transition period, which was meant to end this May. Because of COVID, it has been postponed. We have six more months before the transition period ends. However, please be aware of the fact that uh, the standard is very extensive and requires some work to be implemented. So, Please bear that in mind when you proceed with your 
occupational health and safety um, activities. Well, as I say, it's an international standard, it's an ISO standard, so it is valid in 170 countries, all ISO subscribers. And more than 70 countries actually have been involved in the creation of the document. The document itself is based on BS OSHAS 18001. And logically, the British Standard Institution has played an essential role in the process of designing and developing the standard. As an ISO standard, it is also based on the common elements found in all the ISO's management system standards. So, summarizing, we'll be playing around again with the planning cycle. Plan, do, check, act, to which I very much like to add leadership in the middle, just to highlight the role of senior management. That. Let's have a quick exercise and resolve an audit scenario. Let's assume that we uh, lead, lead we internal auditors, sorry, in a company that previously had an OSHA system, which has been now uh, transitioned into ISO. So. Please read carefully the scenario and in two minutes time I will bring up a question and some potential answers for you. Why we using the, the scenario just uh, reminding something, the correct answers and the reasons for those answers to be considered correct at the end of my expose, just before we start with the Q&A session. I hope you're ready because I'm bringing up the question. And here we are with the first scenario. In our role as internal auditors, how do you think we should proceed? Investigate further and request additional records. Register a non conformity, call attention to the person in charge, report immediately to management, and organize a training course. Come on, guys. There we go. Let me just write down your answers, percentages. I'm not going to tell you the right answer. Okay. I'm just going to tell you that less than 50% of you have um, given a correct answer. Actually, it's now 40%. Okay. Let me continue. 
What's new in ISO 45001? Well, the main difference is that uh, as an ISO standards, 45001 focuses on the interaction between the organization and its environment. Uh, while we all know that OSHAs as a standard uh, used to focus on the internal hazards and other internal issues that could lead to some harm and adverse events at the company. All the interesting differences, again, as an ISO standard, 45001 is process based, not procedure based. Yes, we may decide to go with procedures, but always as a result of a process. It's also a dynamic standard and it's dynamic in all clauses. As an ISO standard as well, again, back to ISO standards, it considers both risks and opportunities. And the reason is the usual one, risks may condition opportunities and opportunities may lead to risks. So, let's suppose that we already certified to OSHA's 18,001 and now we would, uh, we would like to, to migrate it to ISO 45001. How do we begin with that migration? First of all, we recommend that organizations certified OSHAs migrate the systems within the transition period. If not, it is not going to involve more work, but uh, certainly it is going to be considered as an implementation rather than a migration. So, first step, analysis of the interested parties. Remember what we've just said. The main difference between OSHAs and uh, ISO is the business environment. We need to investigate around and find our interested parties, define those. Uh, what kind of uh, details are we looking for? Well, interested parties might be customers, providers, distributors, shareholders, stakeholders, different sites, investors, insurers, your authorities, neighbors, or competitors. Then we will establish the scope of the system and using the information, we'll design our processes, we'll carry out risk assessment and risk evaluation, and we'll define the key APIs for the processes. That should do for our OSHA's system to be migrated to ISO. Well, what happens if we are new to ISO 45001? Well, interestingly enough, it's not that different from implementing any other ISO system. So we'll start again with the analysis of the organization's context. What does it mean? Again, we'll define our interested parties and we'll define internal and external factors that might impact our business. What kind of factors are those? For instance, internal factors, we may need to consider the governance and structure of the organization, the roles and resp responsibilities assigned, existing knowledge on the product, on the services, on our activities, company's culture, technologies we use, our shareholders, our policies, or our company's strategic direction. Among the external factors, first of all, legal and statutory requirements, contractual requirements, cultural and local issues, political and economic policies, market conditions, key industry drivers, your competitors. So we start here. Then we'll establish the scope of the system, considering what 
we would like our management system to achieve and we will set the occupational health and safety policy and objectives. Once we do that, we'll define the time frame in which we wish to implement the system and we shall plan for it. Very important, we need to determine any competence or resource gap that need addressing. As you can see, all these steps are common elements in all ISO's management system standards. So, let's do something. Let, let get our knowledge tested one more time. And here we go with a second audit scenario. Again, we are internal auditors in a company that has implemented or transitioned into ISO 45001. So please read carefully the scenario and in two minutes I'll bring up the question and answers for you. I shall remind you again that even we are not very familiar with ISO 45001 because it's an ISO standard, we should be able to spot the right, the correct answer in here only basing our considerations on our previous knowledge about ISOs. There we go. Okay, let's have a look at the potential solutions. Exercise two. In our role as internal auditors, what action do you think we should take? Interview other members of management. Investigate further. Document a non-conformity. Recommend. Oh, that's in Spanish. Recommend an improvement and document a conformity. My apologies for for having some Spanish wording in here. Okay. Okay. We're doing slightly better in here with 60% of correct answers. And carry on. Well, what makes an ISO implementation successful? Since 2015, the role assigned to management. If senior management demonstrates leadership, commitment and assumes responsibilities, we will most certainly be very, very successful in our implementation. 
we said we don't expect them to write literally the policy objectives or to create for themselves a culture, but we do expect them uh, to fund properly our project, to communicate extensively, generally speaking, to give as much support as it is needed for the management system to be implemented, reviewed, and improved on a very regular basis. So, in order to be compliant with legal, regulatory, contractual requirements, in order for our system to be functioning as we expect it uh, to be, we need, as a key factor, senior management to be fully involved. Remember my illustration of the Deming cy uh, cycle where we put leadership in the middle of the cycle. So, again, what are the benefits from ISO 45001? Well, remember when we discussed those those figures at the beginning 99 percent of all injuries death etc can be prevented so the benefit of implementing ISO is literally uh re reducing the number of workplace incidents reducing absenteeism and staff turnover which leads to increased productivity well on top of that according to, to ISO, the organization, so it reduces also cost of insurance premiums. Very welcome in these difficult circumstances. And it helps as well meet our legal and regulatory requirements, enhance our reputation and improve our staff morale. On top of those, benefits. There is one that I particularly like. This is the fact that as an ISO management system, 45001 can be certified, which means that we can, that little help from a third party certifying that we work in conformity with best occupational health and safety practices, which will increase our international exposure and recognition, our stakeholders' trust, and will lead to a continual improvement in our organizations. Now, I'm fully aware of the fact that when we say certification and third party audits, people get scared. So, in order to, to illustrate that we shouldn't be afraid of getting certified against ISO 45001, uh, I suggest that we join in our next exercise, um, Audit Scenario 3, an, in, an external auditor to see if we can guess what the external auditor is going to do in the following circumstances, here we go. Two minutes, and I'll bring up for you the right answers. Uh, sorry, the question and the potential answers. I hope I'm not distracting you. I've seen that there are several questions asked already. Um, I'll answer those questions at the end of my expose, if you don't mind. Thank you.
Okay, again, we have joined an external auditor, third party auditor, and we, we are trying to see what the auditor is going to do when presented with this scenario in front of us. And uh, here we have all the options. What action do you think the external auditor will take? None. The auditor will be satisfied with the finding. None. The observation has occurred. On their break, they will investigate further or they will recommend an improvement action. Maybe, as well, they may decide to document a non-conformity. Okay, just writing down your answers. Thank you very much for giving so many wrong answers. I, I'm so happy, thank you. And I will let you know immediately why I'm actually so happy with all your Oh, nearly 100% wrong answers. Next slide. I'm so happy because you got it all wrong. Uh, external auditors are always looking for conformity first and then anything else. And we operate under very strict audit principles. We operate uh, with integrity, confidentiality, independence. We have both evidence and risk-based approach. And we tend to go for a very fair presentation of the facts. So we would never take a word for granted when making a decision. So as you may already see it, third party auditors will investigate further before they go and decide if there is non-conformancy. Well, reasons to audit as many at organizations. Mostly organizations decide to go for, for an external audit to determine their conformance to requirements, um, regulatory, contractual, etc. requirements. Uh, many organizations use it to improve their systems because of the cost reductions. And uh, many organizations do it for marketing and reputational purposes as well. So as I say, there are as many reasons as organizations. Then, uh, I would like to, uh, to attract your attention on something very important. ISO 45001 is indeed a, a comprehensive set of um, practices, a compre comprehensive guidance, of, it offers comprehensive guidance, sorry, the occupational health and safety actions to be implemented. But um, as an ISO um, standard, it also focuses very much on risk and opportunities and on risk assessment. So I said that it was a dynamic standard. It is also a, a versatile one, and, and we will see it with our first scenario when we uh, start discussing it. So um, because it is so versatile, so dynamic, it gives us the opportunity to analyze everything from a very different perspective. For instance, when we go with the risk assessment, so it makes us uh, consider everything from, from different perspectives. For instance, 
routine and non-routine activities and situations, we should consider human factors, new or changed hazards, maybe uh, emergency situations that uh, may appear. We'll need to consider again and again staff and stakeholders, as well as any potential changes in our stakeholders or in our knowledge and information about hazards. It also helps do, uh, uh, do it with a very simple algorithm. So, it is simple. It involves quite a lot, quite a lot of work behind. However, because it is so simple, we can quite quickly organize ourselves and start working. First, we'll do our ha uh, hazard identification. Step two, identify who may be harmed and how. Step three, risk assessment. Step four, we'll document our findings. And based on our documentation, we'll make assessments, reviews, and we'll take new actions when we, we decide that those will be needed. So, summarizing briefly for you. The transition period to migrate the system, existing system, and our shares into 45,001 uh, is ending this year. I have intentionally put May 20, 21st, although we have six more months. Our stakeholders have high expectations on us and we have expectations of them. So let's work together to improve our occupational health and safety systems. And because ISO 45001 is so detailed and because it considers uh, the occupational health and safety related issues in such a detailed manner, most professionals consider it to be a revolutionary standard. It aims at reducing significantly those nearly 3 million deaths per year and 400 million injuries in general. So, before I answer your questions, thank you for attending. Welcome to the Q&A session and let's have a look on our first scenario. Well, 46% of you decided that, 45% sorry, decided quite rightly that it would be a pharmacy. 10% although suggested further investigation. Further investigation wouldn't be incorrect, but it should lead us to exactly the same conclusion as the 45% of you suggested non-conformity. Uh, with this, I would like to, to, uh, to highlight the fact that if we have any doubts, we go with um, further investigation. However, in this particular scenario, there is a very clear indication that it's non conformity And I have recently talk, talked about why during this talk. Now, let me just give the answer. You could file it as changes, but most lead auditors will do it as risk assessment. So there, there hasn't been a risk assessment carried out. And risk assessment is essential to all ISO management system standards. So this is the reason we can safely say from this scenario that we have a non-conformity. Again, if you don't feel comfortable with making a decision that quickly, you should go with further investigation, but this further in this investigation should lead you to exactly the same conclusion. That's a non-conformity. Well, uh, as, as auditors, internal or third-party auditors, we shouldn't allow ourselves 
to suggest improvements directly or to organize anything, we should keep our objectivity and let people of the organization improve the system. Scenario two. Well, in this case, few people suggested further investigation with which should be okay if it led again to filing after further details were identified a non-conformancy. Again, the key in here is that we can't see any risk assessment carried out. Yeah, I agree. Um, we have very qualified uh, people around, but we need actually risk assessment to be carried out. On top of that, clearly from the, from the example, we can see that documented information required by ISO management systems is missing. Based on those two observations, we can safely raise a non-conformancy. So ISO standards require documented information on communication. Joining our third party auditor, I already let you know that um, the right answer in here would be further investigation for very specific reason. Um, the auditor establishes some facts that may, uh, may seem biased. However, it's perception. We need to check out and see what kinds of trainings are carried out, talk to other people, investigate further, make sure that we completely see the big picture around trainings before we raise a non-conformity. We don't have enough for that. So, uh, in my opinion, no external leader, uh, sorry, no external auditor is going to file non-conformity based only on the scenario presented. So, uh, very important to say here that no external auditor either is going to make any recommendation. We can't. We don't make suggestions. We just um, register evidence and make decisions based on those evidence. Now, back to your questions, let me say, will this slide be available after session? Also, will the session be available to return to and listen again at the later date? Yes, indeed. First of all, uh, I'm happy to confirm that uh, we'll be sending out the presentation, maybe without the, uh, the audit scenarios. However, uh, the session has been registered Mm, and it is going to uh, to appear in our MSM YouTube channel shortly, maybe even this afternoon. So if you follow us on social media, you'll see mm, everything in there. Uh, I'm pleased to remind you that we have a YouTube channel, as I say, and we publish extensively on LinkedIn and Facebook too. Okay, other questions? Oh, how does the standard help tie together existing reg regulations and legislations? Brilliant. Thank you for this question. Uh, as we discussed at the very beginning, um, it's an ISO standard, so it focuses on the context of the organizations. While we identify uh, our context and determine the interested party, we'll identify also um, the need 
for legal compliance. It's part of the first applicable clause, clause four, uh, in the standard, first applicable clause to our occupational health and safety uh, management system. On top of that, uh, clause five leadership um, works extensively in making sure that senior management is on top of our obligations and respons responsibility, including those in clause uh, four, which uh, among which are our legal and regulatory compliance responsibilities. So um, close, further clauses, clause nine, clause, clause 10, actually reinforce the need for legal compliance. It's all built in the standard structure. Next question, please. Oh, what is the answer for the third question, uh, scenario? Sorry, further investigation. That's the correct one. Um, and uh, thank you for, for reminding me uh, that scenario because 60% of you actually said that the third party auditor should make a recommendation for improvement. Again, we can't do that. Uh, external auditors are there only to observe, not to make recommendations. They, do, they don't uh, make recommendations. They, they don't uh, tell senior management uh, what's wrong according to them. That's not part of the internal audit. So uh, someone is asking about our YouTube channel link just a second there we go if you allow me allow me a second this is the link hope you see it to our to our youtube channel what the benefit of further investigation for for scenario three honestly you need to make sure that uh, if you think that uh, uh, the way it has been configured is biased, you need to confirm your suspicions. Only on three samples, random samples, you shouldn't go for a firm mm, decision on conformity or non-conformity. We're talking three random samples in a department. So we'll, we'll need to make sure that uh, it's quite why broadly extended in the company before we make the decision that's a non conformity or we may find actually that uh, with the rest of the trainings, the approach, the, the organization's approach is different or that there may be a logic behind the way it has been configured. I hope I've answered this question. Oh, there is another one. How documents interact? Oh, how does it interact with construction line, SSIP, site contractor, etc.? Well, again, uh, those are local certifications and accreditations, including if we if we regard, for instance, um, OSAS 18001, even that standard is a local one, it's a BS standard. So um, those certifications and accreditations are very local. For instance, uh, I can't remember, uh, I think that construction line was around 3000 companies, something like that. Well, if you compare those to what um, ISO 45001 uh, involves, it's a huge difference. We're talking an inter a truly international standard here, accepted in 170 countries. Okay, do you have any questions?
Well, if you don't mind, then I'll ask Ken to to see if there are any questions on his side. Ken. Uh, no questions, Maria. Just a comment on the, the last question about um, SSIP in particular. I believe that um, 45,001 implementation can lead to SSIP registration. Yeah, indeed, indeed. It's a very helpful standard. So how do, there's the question, how do we finally record it as a non-conformancy or improvement? No, we don't record it. We just record the need for further investigation. And in this case, um, we don't have further scenario, I'm afraid, to conduct the investigation. But if we find us ourselves in a similar scenario, we will need to say, to say, okay, I need more information. I'll conduct further investigation and then once we get more samples, we'll decide based on those samples whether it is a confirmancy or non confirmancy We need to, to leave scenario three as further investigation at, at that stage. Did I answer your question, Danny? Oh, more questions? Okay, I'm happy I I did. Again, uh, I'm just pleased to announce something we organized yesterday. Uh, on April the 15th, we'll be carrying out a seminar on ISO 45005, Occupational Health and Safety in the current COVID circumstances. So let me just uh, drop the, the link for you. Second. Here it goes. So April 15th, we'll be talking ISO 45005 safe working in the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, just to make sure that uh, it's very, very clear, ISO 45005 is a guidance. It's a standard, but it's also a guidance. It's a non-certifiable -certif standard. However, it gives us comprehensive guidance on how we should be expected to work in the current COVID-19 circumstances. So I highly recommend it basically because uh, in the current uncertainty around us, we have a standard, an ISO standard to refer to. Um, how do we finally record it? Oh, sorry. Uh, you can't see any of the links I've provided. Really? Okay, let me then do something different. Mm. Okay, guys, bear with me for just a second. I'll open another screen in here and uh, copy and paste the links for you before I share. One second. Apologies for, for a delay. Really? Sorry again, too many, too many windows in here, so it's slightly. Hmm. 
Yeah, but you can't click click on those ones. Okay, guys, do you know what? I'll email you after the session with slides and I'll add to, to my email those two links, if you don't mind. Okay, last review on the questions. Nope. And uh, thank you again for being with us. Any questions you may have, just uh, drop us a quick email uh, and we'll answer every single question you may need us to. Brilliant. Thanks again. See you soon. Bye.